Hello friends. So in the previous session, we have uh, gone through the terminal characteristics of the differential compound generator, which approximately look like this. So if it's, this is the reference for as taken as a shunt generator, the characteristic looks like this. The differential compound generator will have a very poor voltage regulation. So its characteristic will be very poor. So it's something like this. Okay. So the voltage VT would drop very sharply as compared to a DC shunt generator. All right. So differential compound generator. So today we let us, uh, as usual, let us go for the analysis part that is predicting the terminal characteristics from the OCC and the RF line. So same procedure we are going to use. So let's start by uh, again plotting for a shunt generator and then comparing the differentially compound generator with a shunt generator. Okay. So what is the procedure? You just select a particular value of say <coughs> IA1 here some armature current you select and you, then you calculate the IA RA drop. Now in this case it will be RA plus RSE drop. So you know that those two values are known to you. So let this be that value. Okay. So let this be that IA RA drop. So this is a voltage scale. Now <coughs> you know that in the shunt generator, uh, what was the equation for IF star for a shunt generator? I'll just put it here. Uh, somewhere I don't obstruct it. Yeah. So, so for a shunt generator, the IF star was equal to IF minus the <coughs> armature reaction FX, right? So armature reaction divided by NS. So this is also an equivalent uh, drop in flux. So that you are representing as an equivalent current. That's it. So let this particular value here, I'm taking here. So this is a negative sign. So you have to put it in the negative axis. So this value say O F. Okay. O F. Uh, let me take it as O. Yeah. O F is okay. So I have told you. So the IARA drop, you have to put it here. So let us put the IARA drop now. Same value you have to take because you are drawing it for a particular value of IA. So this let me call it as OD. Okay. So what did you do then? From D, you draw a line parallel to the RF line. So RF line is here. So you draw a line parallel to the RF line here. So again, it's a revision for all of you if you don't know the procedure. And you see that it intersects at two points. And I told you that we are not going to consider this point here, the bottom point, because that is where the generator doesn't work usually. You are forcing the generator there. So you take this particular point. So what do you do? You join the value OD here like this and draw a line parallel to from this point. Let me take that point as a E1. Okay, so let me take this point as E1. <coughs> So you draw a line parallel to the OD line here. So this will be parallel to OD and therefore this particular value here, something here, this will give you the terminal voltage. Okay. So this is the E, uh, EA, this E1 is equal to EA at the <coughs> IA1 for a shunt generator and this V1, all right, V1 would be the uh, corresponding terminal voltage for the uh, shunt generator. Okay. So, but we are not interested in the shunt generator. We are interested in the differentially compound generator. Okay. So I'll just write all these things here now. So OE1 represents the EA at IA1 for a shunt generator. For a shunt generator. Okay. And what does uh, OV1 represent? It is the VT at IA1 for a shunt generator. You can clearly see that OV1 is less than OE1. Okay. So you are, because you are taking to armature reaction and the IARA drop, that's why it comes down like this. Now, in case of a differential compound generator here, it is this equation, which is valid now. Okay. So along with the armature reaction, okay, which is corresponding to this OF line, along with this armature reaction, there is something else, which is reducing the flux and thereby this particular effectively our IF is also going to get reduced. So that component is given by this NSC into ISC. Okay, NSC by NSH into ISC is that particular current. So let me just draw that also. So let us represent that here. Okay, so this is say OG. Okay, that means OG is representing the <coughs> minus NSC by NSH into ISC minus F the MMF of the armature divided by NSH, armature reaction. Okay. This is also called as I equivalent. You can call it as I equivalent as well. Now there's a negative sign. That is why you put it in the negative X. Okay. Now for the same IARA drop, we are going to do it, right? So you have to keep at least one thing constant here. So armature, this IARA drop is this value DF here. 
okay so i have to take that same value so i'm putting that same value so it is something like this okay now what i have to do i have to do the same step i have to draw a line from this particular point here let me call it as d itself and which is parallel to the rf line so let me draw a line parallel now so it goes something like this all right so it intersects at two points one and two here okay we are interested only in the top point so let me just change the color of the pen now yeah so it is intersecting at two points here here and here so we are only interested in this point okay now what do you do you join this od here uh, let me call it as d1 and d2 here so you join this od2 and from this point you draw a line parallel to this <coughs> od2 okay so approximately if i draw it it would be something like this okay it would be something like this so this is parallel to this okay i might not be able to do it very accurately but if you plot in a graph sheet you will get exactly the same value so what do you expect what will happen what will be the new voltage value for the same ira drop naturally it will be less because the differential compound generator the voltage falls very fast so for the same ia one it will have a lesser value okay so let me just mark some things here so this let me call it as e2 okay and let me call this as v2 here i will just change the color of this particular line also just to match so the blue line everything is corresponding for the differentially compound all right so what does oe1 oe2 represent it is the ea at ia1 for a differentially compound generator compound generator and ov2 represents the vt at ia1 for a differentially compound generator differentially compound generator so if you clearly see that this ov2 is less than the ov1 okay so if i plot this in this particular graph here what will i get so let me just uh, take the actually all these things are just uh, used to explain all these things in a much better manner it's not uh, the intuitive understanding is more than enough but in case you want to understand it in a graphical perspective that is why we do we do all these exercises so let us first draw for the shunt generator which so <coughs> what is the terminal voltage for the shunt generator for ia1 it is v1 here so that v1 is around this value here right so these both are to scale same so that is this point here okay so if i have to draw a character stick it would come like this okay so this is for the shunt generator at ia1 so now let us draw for the uh, differentially compound generator so where would that be it would be at a lower point see v2 is lower than ov1 right so it would be somewhere around here okay so if i have to draw the point it will come something like this okay so this will be for the differentially compound generator okay clearly you can see the graph is uh, very bad the not bad the graph is uh, more drooping as compared to a shunt generator in reality it would be much uh, worse but because i have difficulty in drawing all these things and my lines may not be exactly parallel also that is why you are getting uh, it to be a little bit close but it's not like that uh, the point i'm trying to prove here is that the terminal voltage for the same ia1 for a shunt generator will be much higher than the uh, differentially compound generator or to say in terms of differentially compound generator the vt for a same i for the ia1 for a differential compound generator which will be much less than as compared to the vt for same ia1 for a shunt generator all right so i'll just write that point vt at ia1 for a differentially compound generator will be very less as compared to vt at the same ia1 for a shunt generator that is clear from this graph see for the same ia1 the difference is much high so i think with this <coughs> effectively we have covered almost dc machines completely so in the next session it will be a conclusion to this particular dc machines course and uh, we will be just going through whatever we have learned till now it will be just a summary of what we have learned so if you like this video please like share and subscribe this channel and if you are having any doubts please put them in the comments below and as i have been telling you for the past two or three lectures there is also an engineering circuit analysis course which was made some time ago in the same uh, channel varun nair 
and you can look at the playlist and you can find the engineering circuit analysis module as well so you can check that out that uh, also so till i meet you in the next lecture it's varun signing off thank you